These are the brand new updates coming to Resolve from Blackmagic Design. You're watching Synity, supported by b and and CVP. Hey everyone, Graham Ehlers Sheldon here from CineD.com. Welcome to our continuing coverage from NAB 2024. I'm here at the Black Magic booth joined by Stuart to talk all about the new updates to Resolve 19. So Stuart, what's, uh, what's in Resolve 19? So Resolve 19 is now public beta. You can go and download that from our website and start playing with that immediately. Um, it's probably the most feature-packed, um, feature-rich version of Resolve that we've ever had. We're talking about over 100 new features now within Resolve across all the different aspects of Resolve as a post-production tool. Um, obviously, background within Resolve is it obviously came from color. We added editing. We also added fusion um, effects. We also added in there Fairlight. There's a huge emphasis there on ensuring that we don't neglect certain aspects of the application and we, and we really try and push the boundaries of each of those, each of those areas. Um, that really has enabled us to do that through the advancement and development of processors. So as processors get faster, talking about M M2, M M3 chips, what you can do now is really kind of work with a neural engine, which is, in other words, AI. So it's how we now start to integrate some of those AI tools into um, really streamlining it and making your process of, of color, audio editing, visual editing um, much more efficient. And I mean, just at a high level, uh, AI, bit of a buzzword right now. But for me personally, I don't know if you agree, AI as a way to take away pain points and it's another tool you know, great. And I, I, do you guys agree with that fundamentally, that philosophy? Yeah, what, what we want to do is give everybody the opportunity to be as creative as possible, but do so in a way that still is efficient. Because I think that you can achieve certain things that you want to do, if we go back five years ago, but it might take you an entire day to do so. Well, if we can utilize tools that are available to us today with the power of the processes that exist today, then if we can achieve that in five minutes, then why wouldn't that benefit anybody? So it's all about human enhancement. That's the way I kind of look at it, really. It's how we enhance that creativity for, for humans, really. Well, maybe a good way to sort of break down Resolve 19 is kind of go by the different tabs at the bottom of Resolve. So maybe let's, uh, let's do that. So what are the new updates based on each of the tabs? Color, uh, and then of course, edit and, and beyond. Yeah, so I'll start, I'll start with color. I mean, obviously when you look at um, it as a color tool, it's already incredibly feature rich. So you've got to look at different aspects of way, again, of streamlining the process or achieving a particular look. Um, in a much more efficient and more controllable way. So as an example, we have added things like film look emulators in there. So a whole series of presets to enable you to take your video footage and um, add that filmic look. So it looks like old film stock. You might want to add in grain. You may want to add in noise. You may want to remove noise. You may want to add in certain sepia tones. Um, but again, to do so with a whole series of, um, of presets that, that, that are there. Um, Equally, what we've also done as well is added um, something called IntelliTrack. Now, this is an intelligent tracker that exists both in the color page and also in the audio page. What that allows you to do is to select multiple points of interest um, and then track that object. So as an example, we could be sat here. Um, we could set um, an intelligent tracker against you, an intelligent tracker against me. We could get up, we could walk around, we could move. Um, the um, neural engine and AI features within Resolve would know that we are an object that we've, that we've had that tracker fixed to, which ultimately means if we adjust any parameters on you or I, it could be stabilization, it could be a color correction, um, that will happen um, with the motion that we then uh, that then happens thereafter. So maybe to refine, you know, my skin tone as compared to yours or something. Yeah. So we can also map that tracking to our face, so that um, if I've got a side profile now, but I turn to the camera and I look back, obviously what we don't want to do in that scenario is um, is is apply an effect that works great in profile, but the moment I turn and face the camera, everything looks wrong. So what we want to be able to do is track through that series of motions, and that's what the neural engine and AI within Resolve will do. It will, it will ultimately anticipate those movements. It will, um, it will be able to address and analyze certain features and make sure that it maintains some consistency through that tracking process. Well, well when you say certain features, what do you mean specifically? We're tracking only humans? Could you track like a CineD logo, for example? Yeah, absolutely. So with, with your logo, we could track your logo, and if we wanted to, we could actually remove that logo. So that now what happens is that um, if you're carrying, say, sponsorship for a particular brand and you don't want to see that brand, 
well, we can actually remove that. We could change the color of that logo. Um, we could make that logo pop. We could add more highlight to it. We could increase the exposure of it. So fundamentally, you get all of this control really down to a granular level. And it doesn't stop there just with video because it can also be done within audio. So one of the new features within the IntelliTrack is that I can map audio movement across the scene. So if I'm camera left and I stand up and I move to camera right, we can create a three-dimensional um, spatial um, area which follows my audio tracking across my speakers. So as I'm listening at home, um, if I'm listening through stereo audio or through a Dolby um, uh, setup, I can have that audio pan and move with me all through this, this, this new tracking feature. Very cool. Okay, so that's sort of the AI tracking tool. Anything else new in Resolve 19 we should know about? I mean, you, you mentioned a lot of features, but just at the highest level ones, I guess, for us here. Yeah, I think, I think um, audio is a big, big part of this new release as well. Um, a lot of people are starting really tend to look at the Fairlight page, and it seems somewhat daunting to those of us that are more visually inclined or visually minded. But we all know that in that editing process or in that color grading process or in any form of production, there is always those things with audio you think, God, I wish I'd, I knew about that on, on, on location. And when I shot this, I could deal with that much more simpler. And we always use those terms in the background, which everyone should us with, we'll fix it in post. Well, with the new DaVinci Resolve 19, there are some fantastic features on audio, things like um, uh, uh, audio detection, so um, dialogue detection. So what it will do is analyze um, the audio coming from me now, and if you can hear any background noise that exists here, we can actually isolate the two. So you can actually remove my voice altogether and maintain that background audio, or alternatively, we could actually remove all the background audio and retain, retain my audio. It then goes one step further because within those AI audio tools, we also have something called Music Remixer. So the best way to imagine this is that if we have a band playing, and that's a four-piece band, guy on drums, guy on guitar, guy singing, um, guy playing a, a trumpet, the AI tools within DaVinci Resolve 19 now, within that Music Remixer, actually enables you to isolate each of those individual components. So we can actually take a vocal track of a music track, remove the vocal and turn it into an instrumental. And this is all done through our, our new AI tools. Very cool. You know, one of the things that I've loved just from afar watching the, the Resolve as a sort of standalone brand uh, evolve is, you know, I, I admit first I thought, okay, this is for color. You know, I'm starting to get on board with the editing thing. I know a lot of people are on board with it as an editing suite uh, of tools as well. And now you guys are pushing into audio. I think you're convincing, you're fighting the good fight. You're convincing one person at a time uh, that the tools are right for their particular job. So that's been very cool to see from afar. Yeah. So, so for us, it's all about ensuring that this is all encompassing. I think if you get familiar with one environment and you, um, it's, 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 imagine it's like a house. It's like you want every room in your house to be nice. What I don't want to do is that every time I want to go and you know, go to bed is walk out my front door and walk down the road. I want to be able to make sure that everything works in exactly the same way. Everything has a feel of familiarity. And also it's very easy to use, but has the ability to, deep, to delve deeper and deeper into the application to learn more. Um, you mentioned before about some of the other things as well. I mean, simple things like, um, uh, like defocusing an image. So again, we could be sat here now with the new DaVinci Resolve 19 um, feature of, um, of, of, uh, of de um, uh, defocusing our background. We can analyze our foreground edging of you and I, and we could completely defocus our background. And we could also do that with, um, with, with a bokeh look, with anamorphic looks. Um, you know. And you promise it doesn't have that sort of digital feel because I've seen tools uh, described like that that bum me out a little bit because it feels a little, it doesn't feel like uh, uh, it was done on the lens side, so to speak. Yeah, so, so I think this is the benefit of coming from a position where we're also a camera company. So what you're doing is you're looking at the production process from acquisition all the way through to delivery. And our thought has always been to make a tool that is ultimately a post-production tool, but taking the whole production process into, uh, you know, into consideration. So as a DOP, you should be able to enhance your work through DaVinci Resolve in a way that has the same level of quality and detail as when you were on set. So all of these features, we wouldn't add those features if we didn't think those features were good enough um, for, a, you know, for, for, for a DOP. A DOP should be able to look at that and go, wow, that looks like I've just used that particular lens in that particular environment with those particular camera settings um, and not really be able to tell the difference. Okay. 
Now, I understand that there might be some additional tools for uh, folks interested in live production, Stuart? Yeah, so obviously those people that are aware of Blackmagic's live production offering, we have a whole range of switches. Um, but one of the biggest areas that people um, talked to us about in that live production workflow is replay. So what we wanted to do was really consider how we can address replay, not just in its most simplistic form of replaying a two second clip of some action that's just happened, but how we can actually give creativity back to that person who is doing the replay. So in a live camera environment, live multicam environment, once a moment has passed in time, that time is gone. Unless, what if you could actually jump into DaVinci Resolve whilst that action is still happening and go back and re-edit something, slow it down, add dissolves, add effects, and then deliver that back out instantaneously, back out through DaVinci Resolve. And that's the mindset that we've come to with Replay. Replay enables you to mix both DaVinci Resolve's functionality as a post-production tool, along with the Replay hardware panel, um, to be able to take that post-production mentality of creativity to deliver something back into a live production instantaneously. That's a little more polished. Absolutely, and this is all about making sure that things happen fast, because what you don't want to do is sit there for you know, the next 10 minutes re-editing something or making or trying to find that replay to deliver it back out what you actually want to do is you want to be able to hit a point of interest and go okay something's just happened point of interest we've got it okay i can start working on that now i work on it the action's still happening oh something else is happening point of interest i'm going to lay a new marker that's my next thing i'm going to work on but whilst i'm thinking about the first point of interest i can do that edit i can then send that back out to live production and that can then be run live on tv and now I can start working on that second point of interest. So it's a, is it a, truly a matter of seconds that this can be done? Yeah, absolutely. This is all interfacing through, um, through it can be interfaced through cloud. It can also be interfaced through our HyperDex. Um, so essentially the footage is kind of coming in. It's recording ISO footage onto our HyperDex. So we have a demonstration here at the show where we're using eight HyperDex um, recorders. Um, all ISO feeds are coming in from eight different cameras. Um, and then what we're actually doing is accessing those ISO feeds. We're actually doing an edit on those ISO feeds and we're delivering that back out in a matter of seconds. Thank you very much, Stuart. Look, I never recommend saying the sentence, we're gonna fix it in post, but you know, with Resolve 19, it at least seems like you have a bunch of options for doing just that. So thank you so much for your time here today, Stuart. You're welcome, thank you. All right, that's it for us here at the Black Magic booth at NAB 2024. Stay tuned for more continuing coverage from the show floor. And oh, if you could hit like and subscribe, that would also be super cool. Thanks, everybody.